You know, this is a shop that sells religious uh, items, predominantly Christian, uh, near my work fair. It's right down the block. And you probably won't be able to see this in this video, but there are weird little things they do in design, the people who do these um, kind of confusing things that I pointed out, that are very difficult to tell. And what will happen is you'll look at it and you'll think, wow, something's wrong with that picture, and you just can't tell what it is. Well, this, this portrait of Jesus I'm in the center of my shot here, the bottom one. Um, the strange thing that's wrong with it that you might not notice is that the eyes and the hair have been made to look feminine. You know, it wasn't until after I shot this video that I realized how it illustrates a couple other aspects of my situation. Um... You know, this is going to sound really crazy, and it's something I'm going to explain in a upcoming video. But you might recall that I made a diary entry called Digital Glitch Face that in included, you know, description of when I saw a woman's face change, uh, the expression of her face. And I also included an illustration of uh, what happens when I look at my digital clock. <clears throat> you know, I, and I've had another experience that adds to those two experiences. And as I said, I'm going to explain all that in another video. But and it's this is hard to believe, but what they could do is they can actually superimpose things into my view of things I see and alter things that I see. Um, like in special effects in a film. You know, and one of the the main um, thing that they use that for is facial expressions to use to control my mood. Because uh, they made me, they trained me to be hyper empathetic, and then they they use uh, facial expressions superimposed over people that I see on on the street uh, to control my mood. And I know it sounds crazy; it's supposed to sound crazy, but I'm going to explain exactly how they do it. In video. Now, this image of of Christ with, that's feminized, um, you know, it's. I think the whole point, the reason I bring this up is. It's very easy. The easiest thing for them to do in regards to the things that they superimpose uh, over my into my vision is to do it on electronic media, like a television screen or a computer screen, or if I had a phone, you know, they could do it on that. Um, because there is a rectangular frame that's very well defined, and they can just produce something fake and fill the whole frame. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of commercials that. Um, <clears throat> Well, not a lot, but a few. They're, they're definitely directed at me. There's one, um, a Geico commercial um, that was, I promise you, was made to mock me of a cowboy who kind of has a not-so-pleasant uh, facial expression and it says something like a, a, a loner's got to be alone then he hits his head on the Geico sign. You know, I, whether or not that's real, I don't know for sure because I saw it on television. But I saw it for the purpose of, of it was made for the purpose of mocking me. Because, um, you know, I've had a lifetime of putting my head on doorways. And as I said, it's atheist faggots like pa Patton Oswalt, who works in television, behind all of this. And if you don't like my use of the word faggot, I'll remind you again that they try to brainwash me to turn me gay. So, the point is that image of Jesus that I just showed that was obviously feminized, it's possible that they could, they could have faked that. You know, that that wasn't really there and it was, it was just, you know, superimposed into my vision for me to see. Um, but what it reminds me of is uh, I was watching on television uh, a mass. It was some special holiday. It might have been around Easter at the cathedral in Washington, D.C., and as I said, they can fake anything I see. And it's not difficult for graphic artists to do these things. Um, some of it's actually, in terms of how far uh, special effects have gone, much of it's rudimentary. And, and I'll explain that in another video that they're not very good at what they do because there's one that was kind of obvious to me. But anyway, I was watching this Mass at the, at the National Cathedral. It, it had an a mural of Jesus above the altar in a very common pose where he has, I think, one arm up and maybe two fingers pointed up as well, something like this. And I don't think, I think his other arm is down by his side maybe. And he was mostly covered by a guard, but his arm was bare and part of his chest was bare. And, you know, what I saw was a very muscular looking Jesus. 
And, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, since when did Jesus become a bodybuilder? <laughs> you know, and whether or not that's real, I don't know, because I can't trust anything I see, especially things I see on television or on the Internet. Now, um, the other thing that this illustrates is that one of the things that they've done to me is they've artificially immersed me in a world of extremes with, you know, idiotic extremist viewpoints where, you know, opposing viewpoints are using rhetorical hyperbole to push for their side. And, and all I ever have is a choice to think about, you know, one stupid extreme or another, you know, a blasphemous picture of uh, Jesus looking like a woman and a ridiculous image of Jesus looking like a bodybuilder. And, um, you know, it, it, I never know whether those kinds of things <clears throat> are real or not because of the whole digital glitch face thing. Um, you know, and I just thought that was, I, I'd mentioned that because I, it dawned on me after I shot that stuff outside the, uh, outside that religious shop down in the mission. Um, and as I said, I'll, I'll be, doing another video shortly that explains how they're using this visual video superimposition and um, combined with about six or eight uh, other very disturbing tactics to play God and torture me.